So as we feel the Lord is finished with with this uh, segment of the service, maybe he would permit us to uh, give some words of knowing and some other some other blessings. I'm convinced that the Lord cannot be confused. It's, he's just omniscient. He's here, there, and everywhere all at the same time. And knows everything that's going on here, there, and everywhere. He's omniscient, and he's omnipotent, and he's omnipresent here, there, and everywhere. But he's also omnipotent here, there, and everywhere. I believe he's going to do something tonight. There's someone that I would know if I saw in the natural because I've seen this man, I believe, face to face. And I was praying that he would be here tonight. He's um, a brother, uh, and I know this name in the natural. His name is John Noble. Is John Noble here tonight? If he is, please stand immediately. Well, this would really make a wonderful, wonderful thing for the Lord to do. Is Gerald uh, Coates, someone else that I've met, uh, Gerald Coates, is he here tonight? Pardon? Is it Gerald? Pardon? You got it right. Okay. He's here. Well, I felt in my spirit that they would uh, be here. I'll save that for another time. I may have to move to England just to finish all of this. But uh, no, don't do that because I uh, can't do it anyway. I just, I just said that. Pardon? Oh, good. Now, uh, this is someone else I know in the natural, too. Charles. Uh, I don't know his wife, but I believe his wife's name is Susan. Charles and Susan Whitehead. Would you please stand? Well, something's going on. Okay, is he there? That's her, but I tell you what she's saying. Is your husband here? Yeah, fine. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, the impression the Lord gave me if he wanted me to minister uh, to him, but I can minister uh, to you, and uh, you can, um, I guess uh, these two shall be one flesh, so if I minister to her, I minister to him. But the Lord showed me a tremendous grace package for you and your husband, and that you have uh, taken a stand for the prophetic and the thing that is of God. It's not that you have taken a stand for just signs and wonders or for any particular man's ministry, but you have taken a stand for what the Lord himself is saying and doing and what the Father is up to. Your home is going to be visited. There's going to be a tremendous encampment of the angels of God. We all believe in the doctrine of the guardian angel, at least one per person. But there is an encampment of angels around about you and the work that you do. The enemy has come and tried to cause confusion and rivalry and suspicion among those that work with you. There's a little bit of maligning going on. Isn't that right? Uh, and uh, wave both hands if that's true. Don't be ashamed of it. And the Lord said that because of the stand that you've taken, he's going to come with sword drawn as the captain of the Lord's host. He's saying, I haven't come to take sides with the Catholics or the Protestants. I have come to take over. And he's going to deliver you from all this negation and suspicion. And the enemy has uh, caused this to be a discouragement to you and your children. But you're going to be glad. And you're going to be in um, agreement with what the Father is doing from here on out. And he's going to make you a prototype of what charismatic uh, Catholics should be and lead many into some saving knowledge and out of darkness into light. Let's praise the Lord for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go for it, Paul. Okay.
You're hot, man. Uh, I want to start out by ministering to some people that I know. Ian and Susan Pritchard, who were just recently married. Uh, where is Ian and Susan? Would you stand? Now, I know that business like this shouldn't be taken care of publicly, but I get more anointed in a public meeting than I do on a one-to-one -one ratio, and so there's more authority when this sort of thing happens. And uh, to television before its time can uh, be crippling and can be a hindrance, but Ian and Susan, we cannot be controlling in prophetic ministry, so you'll have to lay this before the Lord and weigh this before the Lord. But just as the Lord uh, showed me what was going on in the body of your wife, he's also shown me what's going on in the, insofar as the geographic will of God. Now, there's a marvelous thing taking place here tonight for you, Ian. The Lord has shown me he's going to visit your mother and he's going to visit your aunt or your aunt. And there's going to be, well, the Holy Spirit is proper. <laughs> now... I'm just relating a message. I'm relaying as what I'm trying to do is just uh, reenact something that's already happened. Now, if you think uh, I'm not doing this right, well, please forgive me because what I'm doing when you see something, it's just a matter of drama when you tell about it. So the excitement of this has already come down as far as I'm concerned. But Ian and Susan... Um, the Lord is, of course, brought you together and called you together, and many marriages are not seemingly made in heaven, but what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. And you're together uh, for more than just uh, uh, the man and wife routine or family, having a family, which uh, you are about to do. Um, but... Um, there is a blessing upon you and your families. And for your mother and father, Susan, something marvelous is going to happen to them. And I saw a vision of a man named Paul and Sharon. Is that right? Uh, uh, where are you? Wave your hand if that's right. Okay. Is that right? Wave. Oh, good. Okay. You're blocked off from my view. All right. And whatever has been deposited in your life in the way of encouragement and faith there is going to come to full um, blessing the days to come. And you just weigh this before the Lord. But I had a vision of you in Chicago making preparation for what it is the Lord wants you to do and, um, and the eventual land of your anointing. And I believe the Lord has shown me very clearly in a perfect vision that you will one day be ministering here with authority and... Um, uh, United Kingdom and England and uh, you will make glad your, your father's heart for a wise son maketh glad his father's heart even though you didn't choose medicine like your father and you um, you, you haven't um, really been pleasing to him on the natural side of things but you're going to be made to be so appreciated by your father that this is going to bring him all the way in to the kingdom of God and he'll be more <laughs> let, me, let me just say that he will glory to God of course but the Lord showed me in this vision your father well, he showed me he's a very serious man and a very um, quiet man laid back and very um, well, I can't say that, but you know what I'm thinking. Uh, he's um, a very strong-willed person. And the Lord shows me that some vivaciousness is coming, some inner peace and inner joy. And you're going to be very proud and very happy that your father is going to be more for the things that he's for, uh, that you're for, than those things that he's against. And a blessing on your mother and your aunt and... Uh, um, also, in Chicago, uh, the vision went like this, that you're going to be in a land of preparation, in a land of preparation. Of course, sometimes we feel ready to go now, but the Lord said there will be a time of preparation, 
and by the time you get to UK, you'll be a polished shaft. That's the way it came down. You'll be a polished shaft. You'll be just like something guided that's hitting the target. You'll not miss the mark. The Lord is, uh, is uh, mightily confirming this um, word this week to you. And you just pray about it and not let this be a controlling word, but let it be a confirming word and uh, happiness, happiness, that elusive thing called happiness is certainly going to come your way as you know the geographic will of God and you will know it. Let's praise the Lord for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. I, does, uh, does Brother Noble have a, have a, a church or a ministry of some kind? He has uh, a ministry. He doesn't have a church. Oh, he has a ministry. All right. Is there anyone involved in the ministry of John Noble here tonight in a, in a, Someone right there. In a degree? Would you, would you stand, please? Where are you? Right at the top. It's the man in the white chair. All right. And uh, someone that's uh, maybe on staff or involved with Brother Gerald uh, Coates, would you stand? Just one person that is on the staff or involved in that church. Where could we find one? There's the one for Noble and... All right, fine. All right, let's, uh, John, let's pray here. Heavenly Father has just shown me in a vision something so wonderful is happening to John Noble. I see a mantle upon him. Also, it is the return of the Spirit of the Father. And you've shown me that he's returning to take up a role with someone that has um, not really drifted apart, but maybe in some ways there's been some some distance, not a bad thing, but uh, there's been some distance. And now, Lord, you're, you've shown me that there's going to be some kind of a, a merger of streams coming together for the glory of God and a father role and a father image that involves Gerald. And it's going to be a source of strengthening and uh, power. And the glory of the Lord is in this. And it's going to be part of the Ezekiel 37 um, affair where uh, the rivers come together and anyone who comes near it will be healed and there's some kind of apostolic uh, role here and some kind of father role and Lord as you showed Mike the other day that you took Elijah home because he wasn't able to fulfill the father's role I pray that you'll let John Noble live because he wants to fulfill this role that you've called him to be and Lord, your precious um, little apostles and your uh, prophets, you, you call them to do certain things and help us not to get out of the land of our anointing, the area of our calling like some have and they've been destroyed and it's so self-destructive for anyone to get out of the area of their calling. But Lord, I see this father, this father coming to this son, Gerald, and there is a joining of... Um, of forces of some kind and joining where two where two are so mighty one has been chasing a thousand but now two are coupling are putting some streams together and will cause ten thousand uh, to flee demons will tremble and sicknesses will be eradicated as uh, the prophetic role is played to the hilt and I'm not going to let this thing go down any other way but uh, you stand for this um, uh, for this in agreement for this tonight and go back and tell brother Gerald go back and tell uh, brother John that there's something supernatural about to take place and taking up the role of the father again they'll know what it means in the merging of two mighty streams they'll know what it means one chasing a thousand two setting ten thousand to flight they'll know what it means go with it amen thank you Lord this brother is here yeah. And this is the state church people that we ministered to before when the Lord gave me in a very strange way, uh, Ken, C-O-S-T-A, and I call his wife Hi-Fi. Where is that person? There you are right there. Would you stand? And, and I remember the Lord showing me that strange thing about your wife being a Hi-Fi, but uh, I guess her name is F-I or something like that. All right. Listen. 
since the message that was given you in Brompton, uh, your life has really undergone a marvelous transformation by the power of God. And uh, I don't need anyone to tell me that, and you haven't told me that. But I want you to know that what is happening is going to go beyond all of the knowledge of banking and all the knowledge of monies and all the knowledge of travel and all the knowledge of putting packages together. The Lord is going to use you in an apostolic way to put a different kind of package together and spend your heart's desire for a long time. And uh, there's such a thing as high finance and high marketing, but the Lord has uh, called you to play an apostolic role. And uh, there's going to be tremendous teamwork in um, your circle of friends at Brompton. And God is going to bless Sandy and and his ministry there in a marvelous way. There's going to be a ministry that uh, I can't even describe. I cannot describe because the vision is too bountiful. It's too bountiful. It's just like the branches um, uh, uh, that grew out of the prison of Joseph, and it's just sitting down in every direction. And I know that Satan would want to destroy all that's been initiated by the Lord, but he can't. And you're going full speed ahead. I see tremendous increase uh, for, uh, for Brompton, for the glory of God, and you're going to be a, a play a key role in that, in Jesus' name. Amen. I keep seeing revival fires. You know, there's been a fire lit here tonight. There's some revival fires going on here, and that's all there is to it, some revival is in the making. And again, I want you to know I moved from um, the known to the unknown as a token to help your faith. But tonight, here is the known. Uh, Scott White is here. He's the son of um, uh, John and uh, Lori uh, White. And where is Scott? Stand Would you right stand? Is that you, Scott? Well, all right. You look like John uh, McClure over here, doesn't he? Does, doesn't he? All right, Scott, have I ever seen you before? Or? Doesn't make any difference. Um, now, a while ago when I said uh, missing the mark, I guess I was thinking about a brother or something, but tonight the Lord wants to establish you in a calling. The Word of God says, make your calling and election sure. And the Lord just wants to put a stamp of approval on what you're about to be embarking. And the Lord says that he is in it, and he wants you to make your father's heart glad because you're a wise son. And he wants you to join forces with the ministry right now that'll be uh, putting, putting the apostolic on the map and letting people know what the heavenly psychiatrist is like, what the heavenly father is like. And I believe that you're gonna be tearing down the strongholds in individual lives you have had some experiences that has qualified you. Some of life's costly experiences is going to equip you that you might speak into the heart of others who have gone through similar experiences. Now, you will be able to know a person's frame, as I said earlier, because you'll know the dust from whence they came. The Lord is now developing in you strong moral fiber. You have um, a position in Christ to overcome things that others have not been able to overcome. And you're going to walk, and you're going to be made white, whiter than the driven snow. And there's a dual meaning here, and there's a dual nature here that the Lord has dealt with. But I see you emerging out of the old uh, character and out of the old lifestyle into a glorious acceptance into the beloved, and the Lord is going to use you in, a, in, a, in evangelistic fervor and in an apostolic way to change the lives of people. And the touch of Jesus will be upon you, not to judge by the seeing of the eye, the hearing of the natural ear, but you'll be able to look at that person and know why they committed adultery, know why they're not getting along in their marriage, and know why. Because the Lord will show you the very dust, the very nature of this person and where they came from. And you'll help them, you'll tell them where they're going. Oh, listen, something marvelous in the way of fulfillment has come your way tonight. Scott, great Scott, I'm telling you, let's praise the Lord for that in Jesus' name. Great in Jesus.
Amen. So, I, amen. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a, oh, yes. There's a big old football player that I keep looking at over here. Um, uh, there you are, football player. Is that your name, football player? Um, now, who is Nancy? Or, or is your wife? Let's see, your wife is Jill. Or, okay. All right. Um, I saw revival fires, you know, and there's been a re. Uh, um, instituting of whatever the Lord has already given you. It's Anaheim. Anaheim. Uh, in January, you're really going to play a part in the revival fires. The Lord has already uh, fixed things there in Garden Grove. He's put, an ins uh, put a desire in the hearts of your people for revival fire. I see you praying in that. Uh, there's a you have some chrome, um, all these funny-looking chairs. And I see you praying this funny-looking chrome chair. You're kneeling. Isn't that right? Uh, I've never been in your home or anything, but a uh, funny-looking chrome chair. And I see a uh, uh, 100 on the, on the thing there. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's 100 years old. I don't know. Chrome hasn't been around that long, though. 100. But if that means anything to you, I wave your hand right there. All right? Then the prayer that you prayed there about apostolic anointing and power come into your life is going to be answered. And, um, I mean, the, the old chair doesn't mean anything, but just that old chrome thing uh, should give you something to go on. Amen. So go for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, is it, who, is it Sherry that gave, gave me the tickets to come here? Sherry, Sherry. Uh, isn't that Carol Richardson's uh, sister? She's right there. Sherry uh, Richardson, you walked up and handed me some tickets. Where are you, Sherry? Would you stand? Oh, there you are. Sherry and, um, um, and Penny, I guess your sister's here, and then Carol is here. And, but Sherry, uh, the Lord gave me a, a real strange vision of you when you walked up and uh, handed me those tickets. He showed me the, some scars on your life. And uh, Penelope? Uh, uh, all right. Well, anyway, some scars that were on your life. And uh, uh, someone named Bill, uh, William. Uh, that's right. Now, there's something going on there that the Lord says he's going to take under his control. You haven't had the kind of break in life yet the Lord wants to give you. Um, I, I think by the time, uh, you must be around 45 now, it shouldn't be telling a woman her age, but you must be around 45, and uh, just march on, march on. Does that mean anything? March? March mean anything? If it does? All right, anyway. So, does that mean, what? Well, good, I'm glad that wasn't something else. All right, March. And the Lord says, because he knows that much about you, he might as well call you by your right name, Charlotte. And Charlotte, the Lord is going to take those scars off. And you're not enjoying life the way he wants you to. You're coming into a better relationship with him, and you're going to have a better quality of life. And some of this awful confusion and this domestic uh, stuff, uh, lack of tranquility, is going to change. God's going to visit you. And he's going to give you some peace and happiness to go to heaven in. And so he wanted me to tell you that. Let's praise the Lord for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Father, I just ask you to touch every person tonight who needs your help. John, uh, the reason I'm having such a time with this revelatory stuff is because the Lord uh, really prompted me to start out for the healing of some heart trouble following this cancer thing. There's people all over this place with some form of heart trouble. And um, if you have any inclination 
that the Lord may heal you tonight, or you want to be healed with all that is within you, get on your feet right now, and the Lord will start touching those with different cardiovascular problems. Just stand up all over the place. Uh, come on now, not just uh, a few of you, everyone with any form of heart trouble, please stand up. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's good. Um, is diabetes also? Uh, uh, a shifting of uh, low and high sugar right over here. Um, that's it. Father, in the name of Jesus, and the lady standing right behind you has a pancreas problem and heart trouble, and her husband has heart trouble. But you have, uh, Father, pray you'll heal this tonight. In the name of Jesus, let this woman leave her scot free, free of diabetes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and free of any heart involvement, and free of the kidney problem, free of the trouble in her legs, in Jesus' name. Let's let that be a healing tonight. In the heart trouble, I believe I pointed toward you the other night with heart trouble. Father, heal this and heal congestive heart problems. Heal all forms of heart trouble tonight. There was someone who had um, a palpitation uh, of heart. It's, it's, it's this man, palpitation and uh, irregular heartbeat. I don't know what has happened to you, but there's irregular heartbeat. If that's right, wave your hand. Now, there's some kind of a, a murmur right here. Uh, who has the heart murmur? A man in a white shirt. Where is he? Wave your hand if you... No, that's not the one. It's way back here. It's you. It's you. Right here. Right. Okay. Um, trouble uh, with ears or something when you were growing up, infections, uh, kind of a fever or something. You have a, 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 a bad infection that, uh, is that you wave your hand if that's right. Okay, you had an infection and it's, it caused some damage in the heart. By this time tomorrow, there will be no high systolic murmur in your heart. I believe that God will heal that if you'll trust him with all of your heart. He's going to heal that and all the effects of that deadly infection in Jesus' name. That's a good hit. Amen. And Father, I pray that you will heal this man's irregular heart in Jesus' name. Why don't you step out of the aisle so the team can get team, to work on, on you. Move, uh, step out of the... Move. But first, Quick. the heart people, now you lift your hand so I can see you real clear. All right? Um, there's more than one problem. It's not just the heart there. You're having trouble in your head and your eyes also, and your uh, right eye, isn't that right? I mean, of course it's right. Your right eye is right, but you're having trouble in your right eye. You don't have your glasses on. There is um, deterioration in your bone. The Lord is going to heal you of arthritis. He's going to heal you t of that uh, uh, calcium that it's like a spur, or it's like something in your shoulder. It hurts, don't it? It hurts when you do that. All right, well, don't do that until the Lord heals you. But it hurts, don't it? Move out right here, and the Lord wants to heal you. Amen. The team is going to bring some healing to this lady tonight. Amen. Um, that's it. All right, bless your heart. I tell you, the Lord is really going to heal you, sister. I believe that. I believe he's going to heal you. And um, you've carried a low-grade infection in your body that has a lot to do with uh, all this pressure that builds up in your shoulders and the back of your neck. Father, I pray you will heal this dear sister now as the team prays for her. Make her ever with whole. Heal that left kidney and, and heal her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet to the tips of her extremities. Heal that right eye in Jesus' name. Take the pressure away in the name of the Lord. Now, we're going to get uh, to spilling over here, John, but... Um, Lord, heal this dear sister of this heart condition. But there was a man over here who had uh, blockage, and you've had bypass. Where's the man that had the bypass? Um, so you, on the right-hand side over here? Yes. All right. A couple of bypasses, it looks like. 
And there's uh, also um, a build up a plaque again. Father, I pray that you'll heal the man and, and melt, disintegrate the, the plaque in his vein as, as a team uh, finds that man. And as John and I agree, dear God, don't let that man have to have more surgery and don't let him have to have um, any more pains in his feet and legs. In the name of the Lord, just Amen. take that away. He's having more pain Amen. in his right leg than he's had in his heart. Just heal that, dear Jesus, Amen. and heal him of um, this plaque Amen. and this blockage that uh, uh, shuts off um, his um, uh, oxygen to the heart and the brain, rather, and he can't think and correlate his thoughts. Open up those arteries, Lord, and heal him and heal the circulatory system right now as you show him your, his Father, your he, his Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Uh, the Lord just wants to heal people of heart trouble all over this place tonight. And uh, believe me, he's doing that. He's done so much for John Wimber and me in that respect. And um, friends, we're on our way out. Now we're just getting started. The Lord has touched us, and so we have compassion for those with heart trouble. And I wish I could see more of you. You that have uh, heart trouble, now lift your hand. If the team's praying for you, lift your hand so I can just get a little look at you and see what the Lord is showing me. Um, boy, this one over here has come on with the pressures of life, and it's kind of a pseudo thing. Satan, you can't have him. You can't... Uh, Give him a heart attack. I pray, dear God, that you will take away the angina pictoris right now in the name of Jesus. Just grant that total healing and the pain and between the shoulders and the left arm, the name of Jesus. Amen. And some of you have um, um, other things that go along with it, but uh, right over here you feel some paralysis uh, or numbness. Uh, on the right side of all places, and, and it's not your heart. Right over here. Who is it right through here? You're sitting down. And you have a numbness in your right uh, shoulder and right hand, and it's a woman in purple. You have two fingers. Stand up, the woman in purple, way back there. You imagine God uh, uh, seeing you without my glasses? And, and he, listen, lady, I don't know you, but the Lord says that he's going to heal you tonight. You have a pinched nerve in your back. Yes, that's it. You have a pinched nerve, and the cervical spine area has been damaged. Is that right? You've had an accident in your back. Wave your hand if that's right. The Lord heals you right now, and the paralysis leaves right now. Now we're getting somewhere. Amen. Glory to God. That's it. Uh, team members, just go and lay hands on her. Um, now, uh, where's somebody else? That's, can't get you standing, I'll get you, uh, the Lord will get you while you're sitting down. Um, uh, this lady has heart trouble here, the mother right here, yes. What, what kind of heart trouble, what kind? Plugging of the arteries. Plugging the arteries. Sister? You have cholesterol deposits in your kidneys. There's something wrong in the elimination of your kidneys. Yes. You have cholesterol stones in your kidneys. That's right. Wave your hand. All right? In the name of Jesus, John Wimber and I are going to agree together. The man laying his hands on you is agreeing with us, and those cholesterol stones are going to disintegrate, and I want you to drink all the distilled water you can, and help those kidneys out and flush those things out this week and that horrible back breaking pain that you're having will leave you and you can get a good night's sleep I see you just waiting for the dawn of another day sometimes it's painful now the Lord's going to melt those stones and they're gonna come out and you're gonna ha you're gonna really have some <laughs> listen let me show you something let me show you something I think Jesus has been here tonight. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the power of Jesus. We thank you for the power of uh, the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the work of the kingdom. We speak now to these heart conditions. And in the name of Jesus, 
We break the power of these things. We command the uh, muscles to be uh, healed, the hearts to be strengthened. Lord, we speak to arteries. We command them to be opened. We speak to healing and health to them, each one, the venial system, throughout the body, Lord, in Jesus' name, every tributary, every aspect of the, of the heart. We speak to plaque, and we command it to go. We speak uh, to cholesterol, we command it to go. We speak to a high blood pressure, we command it to come down. We speak healing and hold us now to every single person that has stood in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you. <clears throat> Go for it. The Lord's given me something awesome for someone named Stanley. It's either V O R E or I believe it's V O K E. Stanley Volk, and you're a minister, a man of God. Where are you? Where? Who's here that knows him? Pardon? All right, stand up. Everybody that knows this man, because I want every one of you to go and tell him the same story. Every one of you stand up that knows this man. God, the Holy Ghost, says to tell this man not to retire. God says to tell this man not to retire. Behold, I've made him a repair of the breach, a restorer of paths to dwell in, and he has the most glorious mandate of any man in this building. He said he's going to bring streams together, make the crooked places straight. He's going to bring men of God to at variance with one another. He's going to heal their hearts and bring them together. He's going to be called a true son of God, for blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. And this is going to be a wonderful thing. He's a man of meekness. The Lord says, he fears me and my secret is with him. And I'm giving him the knowledge and I'm giving him the spirit of counsel and might to bring people together again that would never come together had it not been for him saying no to retirement. A second time. God says, I'm speaking the second time to Stanley and for him to stand strong. I'm going to use him in an unprecedented way. And say, don't you wish you were there? Hallelujah. Now this was worth being late for, wasn't it?